Hi everyone, my name is Marcy. Welcome to my channel. I'm a third year medical student and I'm going to continue on with my Your World Concept series. If you haven't watched the other ones, go ahead um, after watching this, go ahead and check those out. So today's topic is going to be on incontinence. And after <laughs> that we have to know include your stress incontinence which is actually the one that only occurs in women you have your um, hypertonic incontinence also known as urge incontinence and then you have the opposite of motor urge which is hypotonic uh, incontinence um, also known as outflow incontinence we have this ligament called cardinal ligament and this essentially if you just picture the uterus like so I'm the I'm the uterus and then there's this like my hands are the ligament so it's holding on side to side and just like holding itself steady and then there's another branch coming off of the uh, uterus another cardinal ligament which holds on to the bladder which is up front and then behind it the, is the rectum and there's um, a branch that comes off and holds that in place as well so it kind of holds the pelvis um, floor it's essentially stabilizing the pelvis floor this cardinal ligament whenever a female has um, a lot of children and they deliver vaginally multiple times they are going to have this stretching of this uh, cardinal ligament which leads to a uh, weakness of the pelvic floor I'm sure you've heard that phrase weakness of the pelvic floor right away you think of stress incontinence and that actually causes urinary incontinence at the time of abdominal pressure so anytime there's an increase in intra-abdominal pressure you have urinary uh, release and this only happens whenever you're sneezing or coughing so that's like the key words that they'll tell you they'll just say like they'll they'll have to say uh, there's an increase in your abdominal pressure or they'll tell you the patient just sneezes or coughs so right away you're going to think okay this is the carnal ligament that's weakened and in terms of treatment do the kegel exercise if the kegel doesn't work they go to this thing called pessary and if that doesn't work then they go ahead and um, do surgery and try to like like hold things in place and then we have motor urge also known as urge incontinence or hypertonic bladder hypertonic bladder essentially you have the spastic bladder that's constantly just being activated so normally what happens whenever you um, go to the bathroom you uh, relax the sphincter and then and then there's contraction of the bladder so if you don't relax the sphincter you're not going to contract right you'll just feel this urge of wanting to go to the bathroom but you can still hold on to it unless like it's like really bad but you know what i mean in the case of urge incontinence the contraction occurs on its own just randomly it just keeps uh, happening and therefore you can't hold it because again you have control over your sphincter so whenever you relax it then the um, the bladder gets contracted and you uh, go to the bathroom hypertonic bladder you have constant contraction without the relaxation of the uh, sphincter so you have no control and it just happens so that's why it's called urge incontinence now you are embarrassed because you're in the mall and uh, you just urinated all over the floor. This is going to have urgency and this is going to have nocturnal um, problems. Whereas in the uh, stress incontinence, there's no urgency and there's no nocturnal uh, problems. And how you can treat this? Giving anti-muscanerics. So that would be your spastic bladder and we're going to treat with oxybutynin, which is anti-muscanerics. Overflow incontinence or also known as hypotonic bladder. This is going to have spinal injury, whether trauma or uh, diabetic uh, neuropathy or MS, uh, they're going to have uh, this problem where there's lack of contraction. You might feel this uh, fullness, but there's lack of contraction to uh, release the urine. So that's why there's an overflow before it, like it gets to an extreme volume before the pressure causes it to release. So in this case, um, this can happen because of because of a lesion, or it can also happen by medication. Because if you, for example, if you have um, if you have the opposite, which was hypertonic uh, bladder, if you've taken too much of it, you may cause the opposite to happen. Now your bladder is overfilled and it's not contracting to go. And this one will have uh, nocturnal symptoms, but there's no urgency because 
they don't feel that pressure that need to go to the bathroom so there's no urgency the two that have nocturnal symptoms include your uh, hypertonic bladder also known as urgent continence and the hypotonic bladder also known as overflow incontinence so those are the two that have nocturnal symptoms so if they present with that nocturnal symptoms uh, look at those and then also find the other criteria so I really hope that helped make sure to hit the subscribe button hit the like button if you did enjoy this video and do share as that'll be super helpful i'll see you guys in the next one bye guys